our okay. our norm is nine, so I yeah, we have till three. And we are I'm, leaving at three. And, and, I'm, and I was talking to anybody said norm that we start on these things as public art. Yeah. 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 So, I thought that was part of it. Norm this beginning. Well, it was our it was our norm originally. So yeah. Okay. So um. Oh, sorry. Okay. So um. Let's go ahead and um get started. We agreed. Okay. Uh, we agreed before lunch that we would start by identifying clusters. And then we would start um, doing some more specific work. So um, as I uh, had time to kind of reflect um, on lunch, I, I was trying to think about okay, like what would be, how would we structure that? So um, my thought is we would identify first the clusters, as we said, under literary, because of course I, we all, I think we have me on like time study and I play like a chipmunk. <laughs> oh, Helium. Yeah, there we go. Sorry. Well, that would make meetings really fun, wouldn't it? Let's bring in some helium and, and let's connect business that way. Um, anyway, um, so um, we would start by identifying the clusters for reading uh, <coughs> literary texts. So that would be what we'd start there and just say these are the clusters we think fall under there. And then um, let's take that cluster and um, I'm thinking that in order to start to get to standards, the first thing we probably need to do is say, okay, within this cluster, what are all the things students have to know and be able to do? And let's just brainstorm a massive list. Why don't we take um, it from our and yeah, outcomes. and, and cross-check that with our um, graduate outcomes. And um, then I think what we could do is take all that stuff that we brainstormed to figure out how does that get organized into standards. So does that sound like a, a decent process? Okay, I was trying to wrap my brain around that before we all left because um, I was struggling, so I took some quiet time and, and got there. So, okay, um, so let's start with clusters. I think we said maybe first take a few minutes quietly to think what do I think the clusters are in under reading literary. So when we think about clusters, we're thinking about like, um, we're, take, organize, we're talking about an organizational structure again, right? So the first organizational structure are our strands that will have standards that fall into these strands. And then the next organizational structure would be like, this is how we would group standards. Like there's um, under literary text, there's these things, these kinds of things students have to do, these kinds of things, these kinds of things. And then for each cluster, then we go, okay, so more specifically under these kinds of things, they actually have to do this, this, and this, and this, or whatever we, we say. So it's just another organizational structure that we're working on now. So. So your general statement of your standard is being broken down into more specific things, right? So well, I, I feel like what we're doing right now is going from here to here. I mean, so, is, that what, is that what you're talking about? So a cluster, cluster would be like the second level of like a broader statement. So then we'll get down to the more specific of the standard after the cluster. Like that a make cluster, sense? for example, a cluster uh, for a literary test would be to analyze the structure of the test and how it helps develop the main idea. So, aspect of structure. So, yeah, so structure or like theme or something like that. That's what I mean, Yeah, yeah. So, 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 like so nothing, broader topic. Not yet. No. Yeah, so more broad. Yeah. Okay. Does that, I, I wanted to make sure you all knew kind of what we were focusing on before we started. So, does that sound well, is it right? accurate? I maybe mean, would argue we start with topics and then cluster them once we have a list of topics. Does that make any sense? So, like you said, structure. Oh, you said oh I see what you're saying. You so, like, structure. Like so, brainstorm a list of topics and then and go, okay, what are our clusters? Yes. Okay, then that's not, that might actually be better. Because I think we're going to get, I think we might get that anyway. Because yeah. as no, I think about it, I think, as I think about what you said and what I said, mm -hmm. those probably would have both, we probably would have put them both up there, but then we would have been like, oh, we need to yeah, narrow those down. Okay, so let's, let's go back. So instead of um, shouting out clusters, why don't we brainstorm a list of topics that we could turn into clusters or whatever word we want to use, but I'm going to cut for now. I don't actually like it, but I just keep using it. <laughs> okay, so um, do you need a minute? Do you need a moment or two to think about what those topics would be? I'm seeing some heads nodding. I think that's a good example. Yeah. What, 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 
No, like structure, like how text is structured, or like text structure. Understanding an author's point of view in a piece. Understanding the main idea or theme of a piece. Understanding the main idea or theme. Okay. Uh, so, so when I think about like when I think about what are the kinds of things students usually do with literary text, usually they, um, you know, they read it for um, just basically the, the the general comprehension of what's going on in the story, so they can identify the basic plot. Um, I think that they do theme. I think that they um, look at the decisions an author makes, whatever those may be, about word choice or the characters include things like that. Like um, the setting. So character yeah. analysis. So then, yeah, or, you know, and then I think that they then, that's like with one, and then sometimes they do more in-depth, or they start doing something with a couple. So, like across, like looking at how, um, like in elementary, this is a terrible example, this is elementary, but I think about one of the things that our kiddos are doing right now is looking at how a character in a series develops across the series of the book, the books. So. Well, but it's kind of, I don't know, do we okay. do that in middle school? I don't know. I know yeah, my, we do that. Okay, my elementary kids are doing that. Okay. okay. Well, perhaps as a, as a parent, I would maybe go into the Massachusetts standards and look at the literature ones and say, okay, what do I like about these? What are the standards that I like that you want your children to be able to do? And then we list those. Or even use. That's not too common. No, it's kind of more. Yes. So, what do I? What do you want me to give you? Five. Five minutes. Seven minutes. Five minutes to check in and five and see if we need more time. I'm perfectly willing to do that. Yeah, we're just gonna do. We're gonna brainstorm that. So are all your clusters the same for 6 through 12? Yeah. Yes. So it's it like should be because we do the same kinds of things. Like the topic would be something you would do yeah, throughout K-12 just in different ways. So and different mm -hmm. then what we ask them to do is the change. It's more fancy. Yeah. 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 Perfect. That's a really good question. Like identifying a universal thing would be a one in middle school. So they're still cross six culture. through twelve will have the same standards as far as like when I when I talk about like the same basic Topic. the mm -hmm. topics yep. that they're going still. to cover mm -hmm. when they start school and when they mm -hmm. end mm -hmm. that grade. Mm -hmm. right. And then as they go on, they're gonna cover the same topic <coughs> but it would just be it would just get harder or more in-depth or change yeah. whatever yeah. as they grow. Yeah. Right? Or what they or do with that thing is, yeah, changes. Gotcha. And sometimes what changes is just how difficult the text gets. Because when they get older, they're reading more difficult texts. So sometimes that's the thing that, cha that changes the work that they do. And other times it, what, it's what we're asking them to do with the, the, the theme or the characters. Okay. That was a really good question. Okay. When you say literary, you're talking about like short stories and, and poetry, dramas, yeah. So what we're going to do first is we're going to just brainstorm all the topics we think could be a cluster, and then we'll put those in the cluster, and then we'll take that first cluster and flush that out. But that's not part of this yet, right? No, it is um, because. I hate to interrupt the thinking, but um, one thing I just think I need, I need to add is that remember we said we were going to embed language across. So I don't know if that needs to be an, its own cluster with, uh, within there, but I just want to have, have you keeping, uh, it may not, but keep that in mind about where you think you would want to see um, whatever that would look like, language, how we would attach it to 
and it, like I said, it may not even be its own cluster, but I want to keep that at the forefront because I really don't want that to get lost and for us to go, oh my gosh, we didn't do anything with it. And now we need to go back. So sorry to interrupt your thinking.
ready? To start. Just throwing stuff up. <laughs> that didn't sound good. <laughs> that, that didn't sound right. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's not what I meant. But, you know, whatever. Okay. So, um, we're just brainstorming topics. So, um, hit me with what you got. And I'm going to start writing them down and then we'll make them into and a really beautiful statement. Right. We're gonna we're gonna take them and put them into a, into our clusters. Okay. So we'll make them something beautiful after we make them a brainstorm. So what do you got? Comprehend and interpret text. Comprehend. I think it's probably related to that, so I don't know that it would be a separate topic, but just that idea of like close reading evidence, like being able to pull evidence from what you read to show that you know what you're talking about. Understand the vocabulary. I said I said. Uh, with relevant textual evidence and I was like oh now I'm getting really specific but that's that relevant piece is so important because mm -hmm. one of our big complaints from our teachers is oh yeah they cite textual evidence it's not relevant <laughs> to their <laughs> point <laughs> but they'll use it <laughs> okay so cite so relevant evidence to show understanding okay text based Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> this is why I could never have the board in front of my students either. 
and size. size. Um, okay, and that's actually the right word. But I'm thinking of you know processing something and then being able to reflect. Com comprehended and interpret, I guess, would be the same thing. Right, Carrie? Uh, uh, comprehended and interpret. Mm -hmm. I don't think those are the same. No, I'm thinking more. Like pull it together. Yeah, multiple. Times. One here, one here, one here. Well, that's the analysis. What could be I would also relationship to other text because that can be that's the Yeah, that's right. right. I have that on my list too. Text in different forms. Okay, you guys are saying a lot of things. Yeah. Um, what are you saying? T what did you say? To compare and contrast text in different forms. Yeah. I could film with a regular version. Yeah. Or even two I, text, similar things. Do we have a different theme? Yeah, theme, theme, no. theme arrows. No, no. I think um, the theme is very important. We have to identify text, analyze the character, the plot. The, uh, maybe I'm thinking too broad. I wonder if I'm getting too specific in my Well, that, yeah. Oh, I put, I put details from the text, <coughs> and I put plot settings. You know. well, yeah, see, I think the climax is something that's really hard for the that's, 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 that's a structure. That's, that's part of the structure. structure. Oh, yeah. Uh, identifying theme, and related to that, identifying multiple themes and how they interact in the text. You know, like mm -hmm. Hamlet, right. how does the self-sacrifice theme relate to so can I just put theme related like parent child conflict theme? How about universal? Can I just put theme? Yeah. Or I, I mean, I think that we're gonna put okay theme. Yes. Well, and I yeah. really like the the synthesizing information because my uh, the problem I would like to see standards that lend themselves or there there be some sort of standard that addresses that none of these things live independently. So you really can't really talk oh, about theme right. without right. also right. talking about tone, without also talking about narrative viewpoint. But you know, the, they they blend. So I like that idea of the yeah. size of information and reflection. Yeah, I have like a synthesis, and I put question marks next to it. So I was like, I I know what I want. I want them to do just what you're saying is take all the stuff I know, and to to be able to do something with that, bring it all solid. together. But I was like, I don't really know what to type that. So synthesis was where I got to do some. What else? Because you put by theme, no interaction, multiple themes. I'm, I know I'm thinking about 11th and 12th grade, but I'm thinking about 11th and 12th grade, yeah. So. Okay, so you have to interaction, multiple themes? Okay, yeah. Multiple themes. Interaction, multiple themes. That also goes on the 6A. Right, it's there in order. I can certainly move that paper. Well, I, that's a job. Thanks. There's a pen up there. Kind of Here's yeah. Thanks. And it, maybe the I don't or, want to be too picky, but the phrase might be interaction multiple things because it's about how they relate to each other. And I know that's too picky. Ooh. I don't think that's order. It's not gonna. Um, it's okay. We, we don't have anything up, done. up there yet about like genre or medium. Mm -hmm. so, like being able. Use the medium. Well, it just under yeah. How does the yeah the fact that this is created as like a film, for example, how does that? Different than if this was a different form. So it's genres, mediums? Yeah. yeah, that's 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 what I'm getting at. Lots of the other, you know, the, the Massachusetts and a few of the others mentioned fluency in reading. Well that yeah, but uh, or is that something do we have that even with the grade sixes? What do we what do we say about that? I mean I don't think that's and it. I don't know, I'm yeah. just what I've seen. That's, that's usually a standard up. for foundational right. early, early. Because it's still but in some of the other. I mean, do we want to have something about like increasing text levels or not? Like a sixth grader presumably shouldn't be yeah. reading the same type of text. Well, as the rate, a I ninth grader. It's, list, it's grader. listed. It's listed in six. Like right. six. Range, range of complex literature. I just some kind of. I mean, I don't know how to say that, but like grade appropriate. Text so maybe it's range of reading for now. Yeah, range of reading. Yeah. Grade appropriate text. Range of reading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we can put. Um, one of the things that, that 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 helps us with is thinking about when we assess students in our district, <coughs> are we assessing them on grade level right. or are we assessing them on their independent level? Right. And we and those are really important decisions we have to make because we want to know, like we know where you are independently, but we want to know where are you against the grade level expectation because that's what we that's what we have for you at the grade level. So, um, okay, range of reading for now. And if you guys want to reword that. Uh, All right, anything else? I also had context. I guess I was thinking sort of like both historical context and um, literary 
context. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. Mm -hmm. Where does it live in the era? What mm -hmm. is it? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of important. Yeah, it is. So is it just like, I guess we don't need to get bogged down with the verbiage. Cultural context of the text. Cultural yeah. context. Okay, well that's what you got because I started writing before you clarify. Yeah. <laughs> you can clarify for me again when you cluster it. Is there anything else? Oh god. Uh, paper. <laughs> again, it might be subsumed by some of the other categories. I, I think already we're, we're going to want to condense some of these, right? Oh, so yeah. Yeah. End up with did, we, did we say over here? Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I guess I just want to specifically articulate because it was such a big part of our graduation outcome this argumentation. So, like, evaluating the right. art. I mean, again, it, this is a literary yeah. text as opposed to an informational text, but there's still arguments that are made oh, yeah. by authors. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, that's what I mean. It's kind of related to theme, it's kind of related to. Um, that ability, yeah. but I, I feel the word argumentation probably yeah. should be up there. Yeah. Evaluation and argumentation Absolutely. should be up there somewhere. My heart just started singing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. graduate outcome list, or probably should be that. Is there anything that we're reading that we feel like we're missing big? Do we want to articulate, I and mean, I know we went both ways, do we want to articulate certain types of, re so in other words, like, do we want to leave it just broad literary term, or are there certain types of literature, like, Fiction, yeah, poetry, drama, yes. those are the big three yes. that are usually right. thrown. I mean, do we want to articulate we have that or not? Literature. Well, I know we I know we have that, and I guess that's just my question. Do we want to make that more specific or not? I wonder if we want to put that in a glossary. Well, I, I, just because I wonder if we list what this literary text means, and then in liter literary text sure. means. I, can, yeah. I, I don't, I'm just asking. I, I don't care. I, I, don't, I, I don't feel strongly about that. literature implies to me not only a variety of genres, but a variety of complex. Yeah, eras, uh, complexity of text, right. all but, of that. But I think what happens on, so I'll just use, again, as a coordinator, having walked through lots of classes sometimes, right? If you leave it extremely open-ended, it's a double-edged sword, right? Um, what may happen is things like poetry and drama won't get taught at all because they're not specifically required. Does that make sense? I, it does so I, I, I don't feel strongly one way or the other. I'm just I don't asking. think we can say what has to be in a specific course. There are courses we offer sure. in our course that are, that are um, well, I'm thinking about even like the college course, Fiction 214, uh, and another one, Fiction 124, that have different focuses. 124 is analysis of literature in a variety of texts, and, and 214 focuses more on just uh, modern fiction texts. I mean, I'm, so I don't think you can, you don't want to prescribe that every sure. course has all that stuff. Kate, okay, so what were you thinking? I'm just thinking, like I'm, I think I'm following what Nick was saying, that, for example, in poetry, they need to be able to do certain things that maybe only lend itself to poetry. Well, that's for yeah. analysis of poetry, sure. like a yeah. ship point of poetry, right. and forth in a figurative language. Right. Okay. Well, I was, what I'm wondering is, is that more of a, do we, does that get more into the standard themselves? Maybe. Or, or not, I, I don't know, I'm just, because just then, my brain was, then okay. you've kind of got your, your, the, the, yeah, because, if it's, more, if it's more in the standard sense about how are, how is the author doing some, something with the poetry. Right, because I mean, when you think about that list of word meanings and context, uh, tone, <coughs> that's okay, word choices, uh, narrative viewpoints, author's purpose, all of those relate to poetry. Right. They mm -hmm. all relate to fiction. Where? Really, you know, it's, it's not they like they, those are, the, those are the elements of comprehending literature. Well, if they just put, Drama, poetry, and novel, or short story, whatever. Right. Exactly. What do we not put? How do we put those things and not put sure. historical fiction or right. not put sure. wide range? Right. Then if we list everything. Subgenres. Yeah, and when you start identifying types of poetry, you're going to go wide. Right. <laughs> okay. I, but I, I see I your was just point. Throwing it out there for I mean, a huge criticism is when poetry is not listed as poetry, it's assumed that it doesn't get taught, it, right? Right. Yeah. Which is. 
which is not the way I pick it. But there's also a local, you know what I mean? That's definitely a local control thing. And ultimately, it's the decision to become the teacher. That's my point. I hate going through, therefore I will not be teaching it. Right, so, okay. Is there anything else then besides that? That looks pretty good. That's a good list. Okay, so now our charge would be to. Well, and I almost wonder, can that same list with a few tweaks work for the nonfiction? Are, are there different things that we want them to do with nonfiction, or is, are those a lot of the same time? I don't know. If I'm bird walking, shut me up and we'll do nonfiction in a minute. But I almost wonder, like, is there a way to sort of say, like, this is what the skill looks like for literature. This is what the skill looks like for nonfiction. Well, I wonder if we. I wonder if we take these and say, okay, let's let's narrow them to the actual clusters mm -hmm. we want, and then let's say, do those clusters fit? Go well, go for both, and if they do, then we can keep this also and say, then is there anything else that was on here that our student that's not on here that should go in nonfiction? Because mm -hmm. um, I I'm not comfortable. I don't know what everyone else says. I'm not comfortable with that really long list. No, no, I really would like to see it condensed. Yeah. Yeah, so that, I would like to make that smaller. So, um, how do you want to do this? Do you, let's, let's figure out how to do this here. Well, I'm just kind of thinking of the way I would teach it in the classroom, right? It's like certain, uh, some of those skills are still <coughs> need to just access the text, yes. right? So like your first read, you, you need to be able to comprehend what's being said, you need to understand you know, vocabulary, things like that. And then once you have a basic understanding of the comprehension, then you can move more into like author's craft. You know, there's several things on there about how, how does the structure influence the text? How does the medium influence the text? How does um, the author's purpose influence the text? And then you can kind of move into intertextuality where it's okay, now that you have a good grasp of this text, how does this text compare to another one or another one or another one? Um, so I almost wonder if we could come up with clusters that sort of group them that way. Does that make like almost sense? like a hierarchy, like you yeah. do these. Like this is kind of what you need like to these are get like initial I almost, understanding. Yeah, I almost feel like there are some, like some of those are areas where some kids live and yeah. like it's difficult for them to come out of because uh -huh. it, because the complexity of what we're asking them to do becomes mm -hmm. so incredibly difficult. Yeah, like that. there's there's lots of things up there that we talked about integrating multiple ideas. Um, but it's also important for us to get there, like you said, yeah. and not just live in comprehension. Uh, I don't think this is the way we want to say it, but really it's about inductive deductive in the English and those between them. So I'm wondering if we just couldn't have a cluster that is comprehend and interpret and the things that go with those next two points. Because that's what it involves, students being able to move back and forth that way when they read that syllabus and then try and then inferring what the generalization is. And then going back and rechecking as they continue to read and get more information and revise their understanding. So, like that would be your like mm -hmm. first area. Yeah. Just it's kind of, I read it, I understand it, I can talk about it, I can. The idea. Yeah. And, and, then, and then you cite the evidence to go to say, this is why I interpret it this way. And then you look at the word meaning in the context and say, this is why I understand this word means this here, or the, and this is how I think of the word means the whole. So like as a heading, because are you saying just like comprehension right. as a heading? And how many points that go with it are citing relevant evidence. Right, really comprehension. Because these are a little bit basic. more specific. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the right. first thing we had for our graduate outcomes was comprehend complex texts indicative of the reading demands required in the college workforce and civic life. Mm -hmm. So, I mean. When we're talking literary mm -hmm. text here, most of our students, I mean, unless they just want to, they don't need it for pleasure reading like that. Weird text like that. But you yeah. know, yeah. yeah. no, 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 anyway. no, no, no. have identified certain fiction these days as literary fiction. Mm -hmm. Really? Yes. yes. Colleges oh. have? No, publishers. Oh, publishers <laughs> have. Okay. Publishers. I didn't know. Did you say colleges? Literary, literary fiction. Literary fiction. That's those more expensive paperbacks. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, the ones that Barnes and Noble have their name on. <laughs> Well, I'm, um, I've heard, have you read, um, <laughs> Way of Life by a local author, and it was published as a literary fiction. So, 
a so comprehension, comprehension of, yeah. Is it just comprehension? Key ideas, comprehension. Or do you want and comprehension, interpret comprehension, text. interpret text, like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just make that the cluster head? Yeah, do you want right. that to be the cluster? Yeah. Yes. Uh, cluster. Ten. Cluster. What's what 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 calling it? Comprehension? Comprehend and interpret text. Interpret. Okay. Okay. Because when I think about like I think when I when I think about that is like that's your basic understanding. Can I read and understand what's happening what in the text? Saying. Yeah. Do I know what it's saying? And can I make like a, a statement like I know that this character is this kind of person, and here's my text evidence for that. So like your basic understanding right. of the text. That's what I mean about moving indefinitely. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Back and forth. When they so that's, so that's, that's the first one. That would be the first one. Would that be okay? Yeah. Okay. So the first one is comprehend. Okay. I don't really want to argue over the S. I just want to make sure I hear what you're saying because when you say text, it's hard to tell if you're saying text or not. Okay. So, so we have one. Now, this kind of goes. Could you circle the one? Yeah, exactly. I think that goes in there. Those two, which one? I think determined word meanings would go under there. Oh, okay. Now that goes. Analyzing text features, which is way down. Do you think that goes under comprehension? Okay, I'm going to just say, I like that one for the okay, next level. It is the next, it is sure. yeah, okay. the next level. Just for me, it would be a standalone. Because I have, yeah, because I have kids who can do that part, but can't do the text part. Yeah, we could, part of it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, are we making it a verb or not? I mean, a verb. Right. Which cluster are we made it a verb? Just analysis. Or analysis or of analysis cloud cloud. Cloud. So, yeah. I, just, I would just make the analysis of cloud construction. Yeah. Do you like analysis of what? Craft, craft construction. Or do you want it to be a verb? Are you the verb craft in the glossary? Yes. 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 You should do that. Yes. Yes. Okay, you need a different color. Yeah. Oh, I see all kinds of people going, well, what? And it's just a paper sheet. I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, that word craft is going to sound very, um, I mean, people are unfamiliar with that word. I think that. Well, we could go in the glossary. Yeah. Let's see. Well, I mean, I think, I don't know. We, we talk a lot about author's craft, and we talk about that in terms of two things. One is, one is, the author that we're reading, but then also for our, for our kiddo to talk about their and author and how they craft yeah. how they craft their story or craft their article or their pamphlet that they're developing. So we talk because it's really about it's, there's so many intentional moves you make. It's about it's, it's a craft. Just like you know? a carpenter's craft. craft. Yeah, yeah. So the things exactly. they intentionally I, do. I, I, tell, I know what you're talking. About. Yeah, but I uh, <laughs> I'm looking at parents. They're going to go what? Put it in a glossary. So yeah. 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 Structure would be a topic under craft. So my only I just swore I wasn't going to identify you today. Either. Italian, animate, we did this part, I'm excited to write about it. I don't have anything to it. Uh, but when you, the thing is, there are so many specifics under structure that it seems to me you're going to end up with craft is, then you have craft is the, the blanket, and then you have structure under structure. You're going to have a whole bunch of other stuff under okay. that. And then, do you want to be in there? So it's going to be two different. A craft is a pastime or a profession that requires some particular kind of skilled work. Well, it's, I'm just saying that. Yes, right. Yeah. So put it another way. Again, when you think about like you yourself as the writer, right, and the craft that you're you're doing, right, you think about organization and structure. You think about like elaboration and detail. You think about um, <coughs> right. So that's to me why a craft is sort of this subsuming, yeah, title for all of these. But when I think about trying. To put a whole lot of things under analyze craft, which I mean, I'll, I'll just sure. throw out one test like hug fence, okay, which is probably one of them. Okay, well, craft includes his use of a lot of uh, very specific language, dialogue, yeah, language. Yeah. right? Yeah. This type right. of sure. thing. Jargon. Okay, see what I'm getting at? Yeah. And, and narrative viewpoint and the way he uses yeah. that when, when talk is this 13, 14 year old kid being the narrator. Okay, those types of things that, and then a lot of, of, of the anecdotal stuff, stories he includes, like Solomon, King Solomon, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. That's different from the overall structure of a peripatetic journey that a person is taking that, it, that, that you know, is very episodic. But it's part of the craft right, because the it craft. was a very intentional part. I agree with that part. Part. Well, here's, okay, and I all I'm saying is we're going we're gonna to have so here's somebody who's broken them down. Here's a website talking about the author's craft that's broken them down into narrative elements and literary devices. So if that right. helps kind of that's put it, you know, the, the narrative elements are describing the aspects of the storytelling and the literary devices are using the tools of the language that can appear right. anywhere. Yeah. Right. Right. So setting, foreshadowing, characteristic, right. characterization would be the I started writing down on structure. I have things like foreshadowing, flashback, mm -hmm. repetition. Kind of, I mean, it's huge. Well, then it gets even fuzzier with poetry. <coughs> the distinction between craft and structure. Which, if we're going to keep a minimal number of standards, though, that's why I think you almost have to just say structure overall and give the teacher some some flexibility based on the text, right? Within this text, these are the structural elements that are most important. But in this text, these are the structural elements that are most important. Because otherwise, you're going to end up with 150 things, right? To me, structure is a subsuming category for a lot of different stuff. 
And I realize we'll have a glossary, but is there a way to, within the cluster, in parentheses or somewhere, kind of a quick definition of craft in the sense that it's these elements and these elements or something so that, you know, you don't get that immediate shutdown from a parent reading it? Potential. What were the phrases that you had? They used narrative elements and literary devices. And see, craft, I think what they're implying with that, at least to me, is craft is a literary device and structure is a narrative element, although there are other kinds of structures like the poetry. You see what I mean? Like the pieces that fit together. Well, maybe it's just a, yeah. And then there's, what am I doing? Which topics fit under that? We can we can worry about whether or not. Yeah. Wordsmith. Well, Wordsmith later. Literary devices fit with yeah. craft. Figurative language. Authors. So what do we have up here that fits under? That's what I'm saying. Like structure. Craft. Oh, obviously, I guess. Right. right. Okay. All right. Although again, maybe they can be able. To, yeah. That one. That one. Tone. Narrative viewpoint. Tone. 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 Narrative viewpoint. Shakespeare play. I'm not crazy about Shakespeare, so I don't like. <laughs> I'm not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just so handy. It is. It is all 
Now, I think, yeah, because that's where you would you would only understand the context again by looking at like the history or the you know the other works that inform. Again, I did that, but all right, am I crazy? Integrating yeah. ideas and seeing the relationships. Mm -hmm. And the well, that's interesting. Yeah. I guess that's, that's part of your integrating part, right? Like, yeah. what are the ideas that are going on in a short period? Yes. How does the text How does that text, inform? Yeah. yeah. How does it reflect them? Or yes. Or, uh, and how did it change? Where would theme go? Theme and Theme's a good one. Yeah. Would it go here? I, I could honestly argue theme fits any one of those categories, right? Yeah. Yes. It's a comprehension. I mean, it's like the main idea. Yeah. I think so. Theme is here? Well, yeah. yeah, theme is under interpret, not just comprehend. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. yeah. it would be yeah. under that um, but it's that, back, that, that far back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then I think as they get older, it's an mm -hmm. understanding of what led you, like Casey said, what led, led you to understand that that is the theme. Yeah. Well, and then like if you can identify it, then you can, you can look at what, how, is, how is that provided yeah. to me, yeah. or, or, or Expressed to me by the author, and then, I then I can look at how is it supported or the same. Yeah. 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 So there's oh, okay. where yeah. you can dream. Okay. So first, my question is: Are these the, the three strands, or are there not strands? Didn't say that. Clusters. Are these the three? The only thing we have left up here, there has not been, well, this is obviously some. The only thing we have left up here is author's purpose. We have, oh, our character right, analysis. You, analysis. you interpret that, and yep. character analysis is under analyze. I think those both fit under a cluster. Yeah. Okay, so you you feel that author's purpose comes under comprehend and interpret? Yeah, I do. Uh -huh. I think Definitely. it goes along with theme, sort of. I mean, how do you talk about theme without talking about right. author's purpose? Yeah. You infer it. So, so yeah, I'm I'm it. It. Yeah. 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 on one level, it's definitely comprehended and interpreted. Yeah. 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 Okay. And, yeah. and, and yeah. this That's is from somebody who doesn't right. know. But if you're if you're <clears throat> trying to determine the author's purpose, wouldn't that be in analyzing their craft and how they've they're, told they're you? They're interrelated. I mean, all of this is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what Heather and I just sort of talked about because she asked, so is this the order that a teacher will go in? And we kind of talked about the fact that in math, well, sure, because you have to be able to add before you can multiply. But in English, we know you just you don't. Yeah. It all. <laughs> so it's kind of like what Nick and I were talking about. Where like I said, okay, so like I feel like you could identify the theme here. Like some kids can do that. They go, well, I think the theme is blah blah blah. Right. And then you go, and then you, you ask them that question. Okay, how do you know? Yeah. And they don't. But then like, how do you know is here? Like the author That's used yeah. these kinds of things to help me see that. Mm -hmm. Um, these words or these actions of characters. And then down here you could almost say, okay, now I'm going to look at um, another work by the same author and see does he yeah, write the same theme all the time or you know, I'm going to look at the same almost, theme and figure out how it's portrayed differently. It's almost like you're shifting like it, hats. You it's it like the, the green strand is like, or the green cluster is like I'm approaching the text as a reader. The purple strand is I'm approaching the text as a writer, sort of. Like, what is yeah. the writer doing? And then the black strand is I'm approaching the text as a researcher. Like, how does this yeah. inform you know, everything yeah. else? That's yeah. really a nice... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe we should change that. Approaching the text as a reader. Approaching the text as a reader. But I mean... Okay, I like that. Yeah, I call it that green sort of reader response. I like it. It's very creative. It's very reader response. Like, green is more of like approaching the text as a reader. Right. Purple is like approaching it as a writer. Right. And black is approaching, I don't know, as a researcher. I mean, especially research is something like push, right? A critical lens. A critical lens. I like Okay, but in the end. I mean, that was not all of it, but. That was all she feeling stuff, but anyway. It's about moving back and forth. Yes. Absolutely. That's what it really is. So I like that. I really do. Especially at my level. Maybe we can work it into the guiding principles or something. For 6 8, that would be perfect. Well, it is good for the guiding principle. Yeah. I, I really think it, it integrates the other yeah. strands too, right? It's you're learning about writing even though you're reading. Right. You're learning about researching right. even though you're reading. And it's embedded. Well, it's so hard to help students with certain texts that are complex and difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah.
know what to focus on, what to pull out and things that come to the table. Uh, in a morass of stuff, it's kind of complicated anyway. And that's, that's where that personal property is, figuring out what to focus on. Okay, so um, where do these other two things live? What's I see how you try to skirt the issue by talking yeah. about something else, but well, I still I know. I'm on my level is well. comprehend and interpret. I think it is. Too. I, I agree. Both of them. I would argue character no, analysis, analysis is more so crap. Purpose. 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 Maybe analysis goes analyze. Maybe not. I don't know. I, I, I think it is. I mean, I it says it all. I think it literally. Okay, so when I think about what we do in character, like. If I think about comprehending and interpreting the, the, the text, like I think we'll probably identify the character, maybe talk about some character traits they have, identify them as a maiden character or as a minor character, and um, and maybe like talk about even first person, second person point of view. Is it kind of coming from the character? Is it coming from? Should we also add plot and <laughs> setting? Like those three to me have to go together. Like you can't talk about character without plot. You can't talk about plot without. I mean. Those three form like, like a triangle. They're all structured. And that's I don't know. Am I crazy? Well, I wonder if it's like instead of character analysis, if it's plot analysis. And the characters and. Because now I feel like it's all part of the plot. Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. I'll structure alone. I still think oh, okay. that term is structural. That's fine. I was. I'm sorry. I didn't start with it, but I was. I was down here. That makes sense. Structural element of the genre, whatever the genre is. And maybe it's characterization that we want instead of character analysis. Yes. The analysis, yeah. I mean, good point. Yes, I like that word better. I kept roping <laughs> to find one, and I couldn't. So, so if we call it characterization, then it comes under analysis. Right. Right. Yeah, that's valid. I just couldn't pull that word out of my brain. So we probably need to attach verbs to them so we know really what do we mean yes. about theme 
under comprehend if we're going to ask them to do something with theme under analyzing current practice which we may not, but that's that's my point. I would think that it would that what we ask them to do would ch possibly change. Yeah, and we've, got, like an we've got some verbs that immediately go under there. For example, determine word meaning, and a word meaning. Are you comfortable with just starting to shout things out, or do you need do you a few moments? Do you need to make copies for people who may not be familiar with those kinds? So there's the, she's got the DOK wheel with verbs. Would you like to have? Thank you for offering that. It's also got the Daggett, Springer, and Elvis quadrants on the other side, which are Okay, so do you want to, do you want to just start shouting out, or do you want to take a moment and think, what do I think goes under there? Yeah, let's shout. Okay, so I'll transfer the ones that are already here over, and then then you can think of more quietly. Okay, so the first one we, I can do that one. Yeah, quietly think, well, I'm right. How about that? Because we already identified them, right? They're all green. So I'll put the green ones right here. What's that? Are you being the teacher? Sure. Okay. I'm just, you quietly work. Well, I don't know. Does that mean we get to be the student? And since you guys haven't been already. Seriously. Okay. This is independent work, boys and girls. Will this be on the test? Yes. Do we have a Is there a word bank?
defines how characters change in the course of the text. That must have up a level. Under, that's going to be the interpreter. I don't think so. I mean, it does require craft and the structure of the piece to do that. So that's okay with me, but yeah, number one. I think that comprehending a text, what I, the way I operate it is so, things can be totally wrong, but I think about how do you comprehend and interpret a text? And it seems to me that if it is a, particularly if it's a sizable novel, but even a short story, or even a fiction text, the way you comprehend the text is to watch how Huffman changes from chapter one to chapter three. Well, I don't know how you end because it's the first time. Yeah. So, so key characters. Well, I don't know. It could be another character as well. Then that character is changed because he's in the second. So, I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm discussing, I'm thinking, I'm not sure I totally agree with that. And the reason is, is because I feel like that's sometimes what we have to have students go back and think about after they've done their original understanding. I could be wrong, so I'm happy to have a conversation about it. I, I feel like my kids do their initial reading just to get what's going on. Like, that's the comprehension. I know you're saying it's like the interpret part. That's what I'm saying. But I feel like the interpret part is like, you know, well. Are you saying, are you saying the character development as it moves the plot along? Well, both of them. Because if you look at somebody like Jeff, again, the question that, I hate to keep using AP questions, but they're good for like level 12, where should you be? In the 2013 test, the question was about building structure. And it said, think of a character who changes over time and essentially grows up, a grown up novel. And explain how that character changes over time to come to a new understanding of himself in the world, of herself in the world. And so it's that the character change leads to an interpretation of, oh, you know what? You need to work hard in this world. You're going to have a bad life. No, I mean, I'm just saying. But it changes the course of the plot. Right. The plot, this person moves through obstacles in the plot, overcomes obstacles, moves forward, blah, blah, blah. Huck Finn comes to a discovery that, oh, I don't have to follow all the rules I learned in my society to say this is the way things are. Maybe some of those things aren't wrong. But it's not just the character. It's not so much the setting of the change. The text features, the text features, the conflict, you know. There's other things. I think if we do that one, then we have to bring in the other pieces that she summarized. Talk about the way out. You need to know what to take. I know. Maybe they need to turn to the way out. The whole thing is in there. The subtext of it. Well, I mean, that's. To me, that's structure. I kind of agree with what Elizabeth said. To me, that's an integrated standard. Like, you can't talk about character without plot. You can't talk. I mean, all of those major literary elements come together. And it's also a way to make it one standard instead of ten. Right? Well, so do we need to be more definitive in the summarized text, character development? Maybe. But not all text is going to have characters. Well, literary text will, though. Well, no, poetry does. But are we just sticking to literary? Or we're not doing it? Yeah, literary. Yeah, right. Yeah, because literary. Oh, okay. I got it. I got it. And we're in strand one. You're right. You're right. So, but even then, even though, we still need to cover the comprehend and interpret the text. Well, what does the bullet print mean? What does the title, what's the title? You know, what is the glossary? What is the index? I think that's all. Those are mostly in non-fiction text. Well, you know, I mean, I'm not going to run up on the interpret part because I think about interpret, I think about what is it, what is it saying and what's going on? I guess I don't think about it in terms of that deeper level of how is, yeah, how, because I, because I can have kids do one, but not the, I know I can have kids do one, not the other. They can tell me, they can almost retell me the story. But when I, when I ask them to start thinking about like, how did this character change from the beginning to the end? Or even like, why is that important? That, or even what is the impact of setting on the story? Then, then we're done. I can tell you what the setting is. I can tell you where it took place. I can tell you, like, can you, can I, that's you what I'm talking about. You know, can you like inferences uh, and foreshadowing and, I mean, if you're going to comprehend the text with foreshadowing, you know, there might be a dual plot going on in the story. <coughs> yeah, all those are structural things we're talking about, and I'm, I'm glad just to leave that alone. We can go back to those under structure.
or any of that. I don't, it's fine with me. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to think about what does interpret mean is where I'm, that's where I end up going back. And I'm not sure, I don't know what we mean by that. So I was wondering. I'm going to stick to approaching the text as a reader versus as a writer, then characterization doesn't fit with crafted structure. Because that's not, those are two different questions. If I want to analyze the character of Puck, but I want to then in the next section analyze why in the world he chose to have him as a 13 or 14 year old boy, those seem like two very different standards. But being able to summarize the narrative aspects of the text or the narrative details of the text would be approaching it as a reader, right? It's one thing to be able to summarize it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I just said. Yeah, I think summarizing is good. But I'm saying maybe instead of just saying summarize text, could we say summarize to pull in like the character plot and summarize the literary or the narrative? I don't know. Maybe that's not, maybe that's. Because narrative is not poems or drama. Okay, how about this one? I have another one to offer. It's okay if you shoot me down on this one too, because I, I get it. It all depends on how you, I mean, it's how you interpret it. That's kind of my confidence. But this one I'm wondering about. Recognize the significant details and biological inferences from them. In other words, if you've got a 500 page novel, and your view is that all, everything is as important as everything else. Well, that's very true. Yeah. So recognize significant details and draw logical inferences. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's good. Because that also helps you then get to identifying the theme. Right. You know, I need to know what's most important in order to figure out what's going on. Foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. Well, part of structure. Structure. All this is of the literary text. So identify the elements. Because we still have to element, we, well, they still have to, I mean, I'm thinking it's like a six, seven grader level. Aren't you still identifying what the plot is, what the. Yes. Yes. I mean, that's what I mean by summarizing text. Summarize this verse with the retail. Because I, as, as a non-English person, wouldn't know what that means. To me, oh, that, know summarize. that, well, I know summarize, but to me, summarize the text means take the different components of the text and summarize them into a solid single theme. Mm -hmm. That to me, I'm just talking about a student being able to identify what the plot is and identify what, right, identify what those, the conflict and what the setting is and who the characters are and identifying those basic elements. So do we need to be as specific as saying summarize the plot or summarize the do that spoil elements? Well, I think what you were asking was, do we just have a separate identify what these are. I mean, if we're talking, we could, you know, different levels. Summarize the plot. I don't actually want it to be. I mean, before, when they get to sixth grade, do they know what all of these components are? They should know them. The basic elements. They should be able to identify the writings when they get to sixth grade. So that's an expectation that we don't need to have for sixth grade 12. I guess it's not that thing. Yeah. Well, um, but I might know that. The reason I said summarize text and anything else is talking is that, well, a lot of fiction texts, many, most of them, well, I don't know, but a lot of them do have a plot, but then there are real poems and things like that that don't have a whole bunch of things. So you're not summarizing plot text. Yeah. Well, maybe just identifying the elements of. I mean, because to me, I'm thinking fiction. Because <coughs> I know a lot of my students have trouble really reading for information. You know, they're they're trained to go in and, and do kind of that, but they're not trained to just identify at an early at an early age maybe. You could you uh Mary Bell, you can still put plot in there. Even I mean if you had poetry then the teacher's gonna go, Oh, there's no plot in there. Mm -hmm. I mean but yeah, at least that it works for me. And I Well we don't usually summarize that's the, the wrong poem. word. No, but, no. but but you could that's like a but if you just said summarize the key details of a text, yes. right? And then whatever, what was the other part of that you had said before? Oh, my other one was to recognize significant yes. details and draw logical inferences, which is distinctly Well, it's yes. different. But what if we, yes. what if we put both of those on there? Yes. I mean, yeah. Don't you have to recognize yeah. to summarize? Yes. So, yeah, I, that's, a, that's a bigger skill. That's a hard skill. But, but I, I also think I should think that's up to that. Recognize what's 
So what am I getting? We'll put up, why don't you just put up there, recognize significant details and draw logical inferences from them. Okay. Yeah, and then if we want to get rid of it. And I guess there's even put up, because some people think little details are really important. Yeah, like big pictures. Mm -hmm. right. right. I mean, this is kind of just a draft anyway. Yes. I mean, we'll throw that.
to a, like a narrative before and then oh, no. after that it's going to be broken down to our sixth grade or seventh grade. Mm -hmm. our, yes. Yes. So we're going to turn, okay, because I'm just, I'm my head's kind of I still feel we're going to need to synthesize some of these bullet points, but I'm envisioning these bullet points are becoming the standards eventually. And then within each standard, you'll have a K-12 progression. And there's different colors. And they're, they're, the different colors go with the different strands. Did you hear that, Carrie? Did you hear that, Carrie? I didn't hear Maybe I'll finally cure this. She's going to bite the That look good? Yes. <laughs> and I kind of, I kind of envision. You tell me what you think. I kind of, I actually should rewrite it then. But like narrative and guiding principles, like up yes. here, yeah. Yeah. right? And then, yeah. then we have these things. Okay. Yes. So I'll rewrite it because I don't know. Okay. okay. All right. So I'm really glad you asked that because I was thinking we need to talk to that a little bit more so we, we well, know where we're going. And right now, what I'm thinking is we just are brainstorming everything that could possibly be that we want to say. Come up, yeah, come to here, and then we pull that into. We don't want a hundred standards. Standards. So we, can do it. we should just call them all standards. 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 <laughs> <laughs> just make ten. Yeah. 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 So that makes our job because these are all being grown out individually. I'm thinking in my head. Right. Right. I was hoping that we could like. Just you know, um, I, like my some of my teachers call that that brainstorming part like their your bar graph. Yes. I did say throw up earlier, so I figured I'd stay on those lines. You know, so we're just like getting it all out, and then we'll go. Okay, now how do we organize it, or how do we pair things together so that we don't end up um, killing ourselves and teachers with so many standards? Does that work? Mm -hmm. So again, um, under comprehend and interpret text. What other items, skills, do you think need to come under here that are not already listed here? Uh, okay, I was in the math and tree summarized, I'm pretty sure. And could somebody elaborate? Possibly. Plot summary only. Plot summary. Well, well, if it's a story, it's fiction or drama. Okay, if you're not, if it's analyzing any sort of no, it's a straight story. Okay, if it's a Shakespeare sonnet, the yes and therefore. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Just straight up story. Okay, what else? Like if you use 
If you used uh, certain words from another culture, I mean, I can see where determine word meanings and context that would apply there. I don't think you. I don't know. I, I would like to have it literal and figurative. I would like to see that. Can we just put that in parentheses? I guess what I'm asking Here? is, could you put that yeah. in parentheses behind yeah. determine word meanings and context? Because there are certain words that literally mean one thing, but may mean something very differently the way the author is sure. using it figuratively. <coughs> Yeah. I'm just, again, I'm, I'm already trying also, to consolidate. Also, everything might change over, <laughs> over the course of the text. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's all that. Yeah. 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 Is there anything else? Right. They need to say Is there anything else? Yeah. Okay. So what if we take a quick break? I'll put up some more chart paper for, they don't worry about using paper in here, um, for strand, oh wait, no, wait. Cluster two? Cluster two. We're in the cluster. We're in the cluster. We're in the pink. For the second cluster, you were trying to just skip everything else and remember everyone. But I do think not the picture one. So we need, I was like, I can't find my cluster chart. So we're going to go here next. Okay, so let, you want to take a quick break though? I myself would like to use the restroom, and unless someone else wants to chart, you're out of luck. So, okay. So take that, oh, let's give you a time limit. You guys don't have Bibles anyway, so we'll just give you a one. Oh. How about five, five or let's just say a uh, quarter till, so 145. That way it's Whatever. I Next, and then black. 
so nice, because that's what we got on Now, if I if I'll bring a different bag with oh, me, I'll bring everything. I like what I have. I have because mm -hmm. I'm a teacher. Mm -hmm. I have a skinny pink one and a skinny black one and a skinny yellow. I'm afraid that yellow not, it'll wash out. Well, and she does want to. I think staying with the color coding, I guys are able to understand. She does help, help. which is what I did here in my notes. Oh, that's great. And so I can follow in my notes. Uh -huh. when I kind of back lump things together. together. Oh, uh -huh. this was pink and this was blue. Yeah. 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 Well, uh -huh. I used to use note cards. And I went to buy some note cards the other day. There's some empty here. I believe note cards are on their way out. Sadly. Because <laughs> I had to go to Staples. I couldn't really? just go to... Or something? Dollar Gel or something. Right. I went to Target, they had zero milk cards. For index cards? Yes. Really? They must yeah, have just had all their school schools. Yeah, because, because they, 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 I've seen the big. I have crates of them in my room. Kids bring them in. Different colors. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 But they're so flimsy now. They're no yeah, they thicker are. than a piece of paper. Yeah, the ones I buy are pretty flimsy. Yeah. yeah, one of the brand new teachers, uh, when we were talking about, I do these theme folders. So we'll take like four themes and throughout a month of reading various texts, short stories, poetry, whatever, um, they'll gather text evidence as evidence of those things and write them on note cards and put them in these folders with pockets, right, envelopes. And uh, <laughs> there was a teacher last year, we were talking about this idea, she said, well, why do you use index cards? Why don't you just have them do that all on Google Docs or in technology? And I'm like, because I'm 36. <laughs> that is why. Because when I did a research paper, all of our text evidence was on note cards. Mm -hmm. I liked having them in oh my gosh. being able to move them. Yeah. Yeah. Even, and yeah. even when you were. Oh, yeah. Because okay. I remember. And doing that. I remember color coding. Yes. Didn't have color coding. Yes. Yes. Right. No, we did that. And that was completely that was a long time ago. foreign to her. Like that concept. She's like, I cannot get a note card out. But you know what? When my husband wrote his dissertation, he just, he would take a test and make all the tests on that test. Then he would take another test. Mm -hmm. I think I yeah. that, was, that was an art. On something that huge. Well, that's I like being yeah. able to manipulate. Yeah, because then you can things are. They don't like them, they're just being very good. <laughs> well, I'm being it. very bad. But you are right, I shouldn't have started with the twist, and now I'm on some research. You are empowered to tell me not to open a piece of candy if I open it. <laughs> if I pick it up, just tell me not to. You see the video, I will not be diving. <laughs>
days on and um, gave her my phone number and said, you know, we're, we're meeting at eight, so I'll, you know, I probably won't get an email, but if you text me, I'll see the text. So, um, but I haven't heard from her yet, so. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna just, or start writing up like that for you initially. You know, that, see, that conversation makes me wonder. I know I was the one who recommended doing this, like let's go in deep at a single strand, but if we could identify like the clusters for the other strands, that is something we could share with the elementary group because they're a few, you know what I mean? And, and I would think that maybe they would, I mean, in an ideal world, we could all mutually, I mean, independently agree that these well, clusters absolutely. make sense, that these strands right. make sense, you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't want to derail what we're doing. Um, but, well, it didn't take us that long to come up with the clusters, did it? Or did it? I'm trying to remember yeah, how long it took. Yeah, it did. It did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because that was from uh, since about noon, I think. Right. There. I, my hunch is the same clusters we came up with for literary texts are going to work for non-fiction. For the most part. Yeah, yeah. but so speaking listening and writing will be, diff will be different. Right. But I'm again, I'm just kind of jumping. Okay. Writing is probably going to have something about process, something about research, something right. about. Sure. I, I don't know. When do we want to have a separate uh, distinct standard for revision? Speaking and listening, those, listening. those may be the two strands. <laughs> Speaking and listening, in my mind at least, will have strands that have to do with more public speaking presentation sure, skills so versus collaboration, collaboration sure. skills. Yeah, no, I think it'll be more than. And also, even interpreting uh, media text will be a different yeah. thing. Yeah. At least yeah. when, I, when I think of it. It's like when I think of all the students. I really like that necklace. share that with you and then we can talk about like where have we gotten and where are you and then maybe we can figure out when we'll be meeting together at the same time because we won't be meeting in November at all. That's, that's fine. I would just rather meet with my group as a whole because we've really come together um, and that way everybody's on the same page and I'm not really good about always getting things exactly the way they were when I had a conversation unless I record it. So maybe we can get together sometime 
where all of us can meet together. I think that would be better to get everybody's input where we are, where we're not. December 1st and 2nd is the next time we'll be meeting after the, the two October meetings we have now. Okay, and we'll be meeting November the 7th as right. well. So I'm so just saying, like, we won't be meeting again until November. December 1st and 2nd after that. But if you guys would like to meet on either December 1st December what? First, 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 first and 2nd. Okay, well, I'll always take that back to them. Uh, the math group, when I was talking to them last night, they set up a drop box that everybody has access to, and all of the K through 5 group, all of their documents are in the Dropbox, and the 6 through 12, all of their documents are in the Dropbox. Yeah, yeah. So everybody, K through 12, has yeah. access to all of those documents. So who? The math group has done that. The math, K through 12, or K through 5, has done this? And 6 through 12. So oh, there's oh, one oh, Dropbox right. where they put all of their documents. Has developed a Dropbox. Some verbs, 
But then we went away from verbs, and we just had things like structure, craft, tone, narrative viewpoint. So we're going to need to work together on this. I was going to just transfer them over, but I can't do that because there's no verbs. So um, what do we what do we think? What do we want to do? Or you want some? You want a moment to think? Oh, I'm gonna come under here, or you want to just start? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Throw myself out. Okay, so even though we said identify craft and structure, we want to start with um, identify structure and explain the significance of that structure. Well, or also there's the question of levels of structure. Identify the overall structure of the test. Identify the genre and the overall structure of the form. Certainly, you have to be able to identify it before right, you can you analyze. To, the next yeah. step would be like analyzing then how those different structural elements impact a reader's comprehension of the or a reader's experience. However, you want to say that. Again, I would be inclined to merge those together. Yeah, we can do that. We can just make that and analyze yeah. how that structure. Well, like meaning. Meaning. I was going to say, it has meaning. meaning. Yeah, I like that. Better. That's not meaning. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jordan. Appreciate it. Have fun. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Tigers. Yeah. Um, assess how point of view and impacts meaning. I mean, I think whatever phrase we want to use is going to show up a lot in this section. Um, it shapes the content of the text. So do we want to list point of views separately from all these other things, or do we want to cluster point of view with, That's a fair yeah, with point. I think we do. Yeah, but we do cluster it. But the, to me, like, again, setting, plot, character goes together really well. But mm -hmm. point of view Maybe is separate. Point of view goes, tone. 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 I, I would do that. I like, yeah. could put those two together. Um, is mood in there anywhere? Yeah, mood is created by, yeah. Assess, analyze, I mean, we could just have a lot of analyze with the cluster well, analyze. Right? I'm telling you, first you have to identify it. Yes. You have to identify point of view and tone. Okay, do so you think, can we say identify point of view and tone? Yeah, that's what we need to do. Yeah. Because think about the text, like I, I taught it, but I'm like, yeah, that would be interesting. Although Multiple narrative viewpoints. And do you, are you recognizing all the different it? Tones do you think that's important? You have to recognize it. Yeah, you have to recognize it. Like you said, because can't analyze it without knowing it. I'm, well, at, true, I, I'm just looking for ways to make it less to boring, me it, but First, you identify it. Sure. You know, sure. I, I agree. You have to have identified it more And that takes a while at our level. It does. Right. That right. identification just yeah. doesn't happen. Right. 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 <clears throat> this is author's point of view, correct? Uh huh. Well, or is it the literary? I mean, the, you know what I mean? The point of view in the text. Yeah, like first person versus the third nerd. person. Right. That is never clear. very clear. No, it isn't. And we went oh, back. Gosh, we went through that the last time we worked on these. Yeah, I, mean, the I feel like those are two different, different things. I feel yeah, like they are. first yeah, person, second person, person, third person point is, point is the point of view that the story is told through. Right. But then point of view is the author's point of view. What is my point of view on whatever I am communicating? Mm -hmm. As a teacher, that you can even call it for purpose. As a teacher, that you can just, I see no Well, but then I'll do purpose because you see my person to inform or to change. Yeah, I can just talk only about that. So does it go into identifying, and that's where that argument piece in fiction comes in for me. Because if this was nonfiction, we would say, what's the author's claim? Or what is the author's, you know, what does the author want us to do? But that's, I think, you bring up a good point because we do want fiction to be able to have that element. So in, in this section, I would argue point of view is the narrative point of view, as a like yeah. literary, the point, literary of view, point of view, not the author's point of view. Why don't you just put in narrative, narrative point of view? 
Think of it as a craft element, right? Like yeah. a choice. I think it definitely needs to be telling right, because Jimmy Hunt is just from a point of view. Unreliable narrators. What you say there? Right. Is it authors? What is it? Right. I, yeah. yeah, there is an author. Right, right, right. Yes. Yeah. 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 Just getting kicked to the And you've even got narrative points of view in poetry as well with first person. I would couple with tone just language yeah. choice yeah. in general. And maybe, maybe that's being explained, you know what I mean? But like, why did they use this particular phrase? Or, or to interpret yeah. why? Or interpret yeah. why they're using it? <laughs> yeah. Or interpret yeah. any of those words. Because we use it a lot. Yeah. Are you in addiction with time? I think all of that could be loose. So was it analyzed? Did you want to take analyze out there because you with interpret? Is that what you said? I, I, don't, I don't care about the. Well, we have our cluster is analyzed. I mean, that's, that's why we're. <laughs> that's what I said. Because it is breaking, what we're doing is deconstructing the text. Yes. Mm -hmm. so. Maybe that's a different grade level. Mm -hmm. Just being able to recognize when it's being used mm -hmm. versus True. Right. 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 Somebody well, thinks it's this way, and then they think it's this way, and they can't think it's this way, it's and not this way. It's depending on who they have. Right. Yeah, that is. Okay. What else? We have um, kind of got the structure. Right. Narrative viewpoint. Characterization. Best features. Best features. Best features. Best features. Best features. Best features. I've got my triangle bias, but again, I would say something along the lines of identify and, and, anal and analyze the interplay between character, plot, and setting. To me, those three go together, but I, if you want to break them apart, I'm fine with that, too. I kind of like that, too. You I, like that a lot. I think they do. I just, yeah, I don't know how you can talk about one really yeah, without the other. Right, even you don't talk about any of them. Because, like, again, back to Moby Dick, like, the whole inside of the veil is, like, it's important if the character, where they are. And then if you say, it's how does the setting affect the story? <laughs> it's so isolated <laughs> that right. you know, it's hard for six or eight to come up with. A well, it's setting and character are changing over time with plot. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's a, We're it's changing a conflict in plot. And you need to see how each one impacts the other. Yeah. yeah. The, the setting has such an impact on the character, right? The right. Sometimes. Right. The rain oh, coming on the roof and she cries. <laughs> 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 So what did I you say? Said, <laughs> we all talked about books, now what? <laughs> analyze, and again we have clear student friendly language, but analyze the interplay between plot, character, and setting. Right. Sort of like I've already said. Interaction. With conflict oh. being subsumed under plot, you know what I mean? Right, conflict, conflict interaction. Plot. Yeah. The interaction, interaction is solution. Right. Is your action? Right. Uh, interaction, interplay, whatever you want to do. So is climax under plot? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. And again, the whole idea of are you a static character versus dynamic right. and all that is tied into plot and, and conflict and yeah, yeah, how are you yeah, changing? Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, no. Getting close. So just start like yeah. whistling and I feel like yeah. yeah. classically yeah. conditioning yeah. makes. Are you saying your dance space? Very important. Your dance space. Is this your bubble? Right. Right. No, I can bring some masking tape the next time. I think you're on the line. Partition. I did that first grade. Okay, is there anything else? <laughs> Nick, with that child. I'm uh, sorry that I moved that uh, over. I was trying to make more room for writing, but um, we have what about we have text, text features, features on there? But that is that part of structure? Or uh, not? I think so. I I think it is, but I that's my I, that's my bias in there. I really yeah. think the structure should. And I feel like because I this is one of the things I love about thinking about craft is that um, as a as a I was thinking about as a writer is that I think I choose the features I'm going to include as a as a as a craft move also. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, what right. what do I want to what help yeah. do I want to give to the reader is by putting in um, footnotes or whatever or not, you know. Okay, well let me ask you this. I can, and again I, the definition of text features, but what about something like the fact that E. E. Cummings, what he does with capitalization. Yeah. Or, or what Mary Evans does with alternating uh, characters yeah. in a poem, and that's one of them is italicized, yeah. and in parentheses. I think that's structure too. Okay, but I think that's but is that a my question is, is that a text feature? That's what I'm asking. Uh, 
See, there is where I I'm a teacher of fiction. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, sure. so much sure. based on the sure. text John type, right. right? Well, we live with in text features. We we live in almost in nonfiction. I like fiction. I know. That's why I asked that question. Yeah. You were it's hard to get text features out. Text features to to literary text. Right. And maybe we should. What does it look like? Is that an example of what it looks like, or does it not that's exist right. in literary text? That's my question. Well, so no, it can it also it does be exist, but at our level, it's very far and few. Okay. The lower you get, it's like you have a paragraph and they indented, they skip it. There's a picture. <laughs> well, 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 I think I, I think that it, you know even in like a textbook story, when you're you know they, they pull out they bold words you know I mean I, that's a, that's a, yeah you know italics well, bold italics. But I, I think Wait, that those are vision. Yeah. Well, so what about sometimes I'm not even often use those those aren't correct. Right. So I think about the texts that we read and what I ask kids to do with them, and when I think about somebody like Edgar Allan Poe. And asking students to explain how he built suspense, mm -hmm. and that that uh, that lives somewhere here, mm -hmm. or how does a certain author slow the text down? Okay, why why are, why is it going so fast? Yeah, I wrote that down as plotting structures where I put pacing, mm -hmm. pacing, um, foreshadowing, flashback, repetition. Yes. Kinds of well, and Telltale Heart, so you know, that's a perfect pacing. Yeah. You don't think I'm mad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then it just goes faster. So it's really sure that, that yeah, it does. It exists somewhere here. Sure. And that's what we talked about, how how it really gets to the, his madness at the end. It gets, it just snowballs and goes so fast. So far, it's just thank you. So for me, it's <laughs> <laughs> under this very I'm just saying I taught it last year in 20th grade, and I was oh, like, oh, there is structural. I'm only talking, and they're looking at Meredith. me going, merit of structural <laughs> elements. So <laughs> see, I did eighth grade. So I think we have, like, when you talk about, like, it was fine. The absence of the capital letter, or the absence of punctuation, or the the, the playfulness with those things. I feel like those are those are grammatical or conventional structures. I know it's playing with conventional. So, I don't really see those like text features, but I'm just I'm just trying to get. You know, I don't see those as text features, but I use them part as part of text. Oh right. yeah. But I also see that you can choose to um, use text features as a as also a part of your craft. You know. And more and more contemporary writers. Okay. Yeah. Well, Nancy, say some other things besides footnotes, which are included in, in literary text. A lot of times, what else would be well, a text feature? I mean, a lot of contemporary texts use the capability that we have now to just alter the way the page looks. I mean, you know, kind of splatter things on the yeah. page. Push and closure, yeah. Well, the, even in multimodal text. Even in as well, yes. Reading. And that's something we've never had to really deal with before. In fact, it wasn't. I guess the capability right. wasn't there. Right. No. Like a graphic novel, how that's right. like oh, those graphic features in there. I mean, those are. But I, I, I feel I mean, the blanket term more. structures. But that, those, are, those, those have text features, features in them. That and I think it's going to be impossible for us to dictate, without dictating for every single no, genre and text type, and fact, structure is different. If you know what I mean? moves us not to be too specific right. because it's going to keep changing. Right. Mm -hmm. right. It will certainly keep changing. That is true. <laughs> but what do we do with it? Just leave it the structure. But what does that leave it where? That leaves it where structure. Analyze how the structure impacts the meaning. Like oh, I we already have. Yeah. Oh, we're so smart. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. We are. We can just talk to ourselves. Okay. Okay. So what? Okay. So that was. But that does not get to the text features live there. Right. And that's what I'm saying. I don't know. Unless we have a definition of that. Yeah. I mean, it could be analyze how the structure, including text features, impacts the meaning. Yeah, I like yeah. it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no I'm, I'm okay with it. I still just need a definition of that word, the definition. Okay. We need to, we need to identify more what that means. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I guess, you I know, guess I would say I'm physical sure any terms of text. Is that what you mean? That's fine. Let's do that as a drafted.
Okay. Um, I mean, would you even, I don't know, all those structural loans? Like, mm -hmm. We're going to have to come to a consensus on what that probably means. For, for, the list is more. You know, but I, cause I, I think about it in terms of is it chapters or is it, to me that's a text feature, but it's also a structure. But it's also a structure, you know, like I, what about dialogue? It's a text feature that makes the structure obvious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a, it's a novel or, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, we need to re re maybe do some more thinking and research. I thought our little text that. features were very boring. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think so. No. Okay. It's middle school. Middle school. Story, right? Right. And there are, yeah, there's so many more. But it's nice for us to, I think, for us to use that language interchangeably so they can see right. the text features up here in both. Right. And well, we had a hard time last year, for example, in one of my sixth grade classes, just getting that across because there's not that many examples of it yeah. at our level. Um, they, well, and the older they, they get, the fewer features come into play. Right. If we go back to that idea that it's this more this non fiction, is maybe it's addressed oh. there. But it is. If, if we go back oh, to the idea, there. Yeah, that's if we go back yeah. to the idea of like you're approaching this as a writer, how would we evaluate our students' writing? Right, you're making choices about organization, you're making choices about language, you're making choices about convention, you're making choices about content, and like, do those? Does that help at all? Like, maybe not. I mean, I was going to say some of the like. You mean trying to show them how they would use it in writing? Well, what I'm well. saying is, yeah, so like when we talk about your language that you're using as a student writer, right, what about what language choices is the author making? What convention choices are the author making? What organizational choices are the author right. making? Right, and nowhere in there did I hear you say text features. So why are we, why are we working so hard to try to make it fit in fiction? Yeah, that's why I keep asking. Like, well, that's true. Right. Why, why it's are a hard, we, hard it, thing to even yeah. teach it. But, but yeah. it's almost I would, always used Reference to non-fiction. Yeah, it is. So why don't we just blow it away? I think we're trying to. We're trying to keep it for non-fiction. Yeah, and just talk in terms of structure and fiction. I don't know. It's going to be a stretch. Yeah. I just feel in in today's world and what we've had for ten years or whatever, you say text features, you think non-fiction, mm -hmm. and I think that could, it, it can be really. It was so confusing for the kids whenever you try to. I know at my level, at the older level, I guess you guys are more sure. No, okay, so that's not a big, but it is a confusing term <coughs> in the literary side. Okay, so on the literary side, it comes off? I think so. No. Okay, cross off what you just maybe right up there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. I think that was just a catch all. I don't mind. mind. And it might catch nothing. I'm fine with that. Really, I was thinking this is going to be a really long standard because we're going to go with convention, conventions of grammar and. Okay. Yeah, and when you, I, I'm starting to think here about, uh, and I, you know, I know my perspective on this is I, I look at the AP literature exam and, and I have the career tech where they need to go with that. It seems to me that it's good what the list we have, I think it, we've already had some about word meaning, so we have figurative versus. You know, connotations, figurative versus literal meanings of words. But what about, I don't think these are counted as figurative language, but tell me if I'm wrong. Irony, mm -hmm. allusions, those are not really figurative language. Because figurative language is that. Metaphorical, like figurative as opposed to literal. I think allusions. And, and if we don't, if we don't have in, and if they are not able to deal with mm -hmm. allusions, irony, mm -hmm. Know, references to other texts. But does that yeah. get into our next string yeah. cluster, yeah. which yeah. is the pulling in oh, intertextuality, so right? Like when together. illusion makes yeah. sense yeah. in the I think in, in, in the intertextuality. Yes. They, well, there there could be, but it's, what about in an yeah. individual text? What if you're right. writing most of it? Alone. It's it's got, I mean, if they sure. don't know, if they call it Ishmael, you don't know who Ishmael is, they're messed over. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, recognize. Well, we have analyzed how the structure impacts meaning. It's almost yeah, about word choice impacting yeah. meaning, too. Yeah, but because I, if, I, am I using all and irony are different. Figures of speech. Uh, I think uh, they are. Figures of language. Okay. Um, 
you know, those so are it's, it's a literary guide. It is. What is that? Maybe we have. Maybe we have one about literary advice. Maybe it's a figurative language. Figurative language. Yeah. You know, there's it's fifteen different like things you can call it, but on our level, it's all lumped together. But I know, like, if I make an anchor chart in my class and we're talking about it, I have literary device up there, and then all this other stuff fell under it, kind of like what we charted yeah. out here. Literary you know, device. Yeah, and then it was. Illusions. It was. It was similar 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 similar. Similar. It's, it's all of it. Well, so I, is it analyzed how literary devices impact meaning? Because I feel like it's the same yeah, thing. Yeah. It's about the meaning. I think how they contribute to meaning. How yeah. literary yeah. device, how literary right. device. That would catch all rates. Right. Because I, I'm not sure. I would expect sixth graders to recognize irony because I have right. no. <laughs> <laughs> to recognize irony. Right. And that's that's right. Right. They recognize irony. Yeah, they do. Yes. Not like if I say you're right in the middle of another right Just to sarcasm. You have to break it down our level of dramatic irony. Sarcasm. Is there anything very specific? Is there anything else we're missing from this area here? Just worry about the second one. Analyze how the structure impacts the meeting because it is so broad. Uh, maybe would it help to say organizational structure? Or are we well, then we're going to add about something against? about your. Well, they combine your one and two. Identify and analyze how the overall structure contributes to meeting. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. So that, I'm sorry. Analyze how yeah. the overall structure. Just contributes make bullet to point two part of bullet point one. Make it one bullet point. So that makes it the first two should be like one in total. Identify and analyze how overall structure contributes to me. Um, I don't, I, I'm not sure that that's the wisest decision. 
Maybe it is, you tell me. I mean, is it, is it to, to do the last one, which is integrate ideas and see your relationships among text? Um, How many things do we have circled over there? For that one? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. Why don't we set it but the agenda is easy, though, I think, right? Just Next time we start with another strand, Keep right? Keep going, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. there's anything else we need to do. Well, we um, at that down, and then we put more there, and then right down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, okay. So, 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 so at least right. write down the ones that are over right. here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, would you be um, would you be okay with me after we're finished moving? these things to here, yeah. would you be okay with me just typing this and then discarding this one? Yes. Uh, yes. Because I, some of them I think we're going to need to have up so we can see, but others I feel like are just going to make things cloudy. This will just be a record of our thinking because we're just we just yeah. brainstormed it yeah. and transferred it. Would you be okay with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just, I, some of them, like I said, I think need to be visual up uh, front for our, for us to see, but others I think are just going to club the room. Um, one hundred three, which is black. So it was integrate ideas Thank you. and see relationships among tests. That C. Well, yeah, I don't like it at all. We keep saying that, but identify. Recognize, distinguish, evaluate, pass. <laughs> We're going through our words. Uh, I don't like see either, but um, what does that mean when you see it? We can change it later. Okay. Slap it up there. We can change it later. Recognize relationships. Connect. Just what about integrate? Integrate ideas and. Compare. Yeah. Compare with those. Yeah, I'll put well, that in there. Because compare implies well, contrast. Right. Exactly. Okay. All right. So we have synthesized information and reflection. So what do we mean by that? Like I can do synthesized information from multiple literary texts. What does it say? Synthesized information and reflection. Yeah. Like that was our oh, reflection. It's like keeping out, like I, I brought it all in and here's what I think about it or here's my, right? right? Reflecting on your, their, I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, when you reflect on something, it's to me that kind of deeper understanding. Yeah. And maybe I'm not wording it right. Two or three texts, I yeah. pull all the information together and I'm like, okay, now here's my thinking on that. Reflection on that. So, but I don't like the, statement synthesized information and reflection. So I'd like you to help me out. Well, do we mean that you synthesize the information and then you're able to articulate what yeah. you think in writing? Or what we well, when I think about the AP language test, it asks students to synthesize extra set of sources and then to write an essay, but reflection isn't part of that. Synthesizing is the verb, right. you know, like it's not, and maybe reflection goes more into writing in a separate. That's part of what you do, right? Right. 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 Okay. So. So synthesizing. It's just synthesizing the information from so multiple texts. Yeah, it is multiple. Oh yeah, it has to. Yeah. Okay. So synthesize information from multiple texts. Or like um, um, in the in the in the uh, different things. 
Cinderella. I was just saying similar topics. Similar topics. Same thing. Having American Giraffe's text with similar topics. Address similar themes or topics. Okay. Something like that. And on the one above it, if you would just maybe specify in parentheses say like genres or media. I mean, I, I can't yeah. go without saying, but. Well, are we asking them to get out of the literature, the literary fiction? Not necessarily. Into the, uh, not necessarily. Like film is an literary too. Right, it just depends, I mean, it could be, but you know, like a graphic novel or a film or a, you know what I mean? Yeah, or sometimes like, you know, there's a, this piece of yeah, art. there's a story, yeah, yeah. Or a piece of art, there's a story now and there's a poem that's on that same, you know, like, let's just use Romeo and Juliet as an example. How many times that is old in different, you know, like, that's what it's doing. Um, yeah, the evaluates the arguments, the author, I don't know, something like that. You've, you've been thinking about this one for a while. Yeah, I'm just not sure that it goes in in the way they see it. What is it? I can't see. What evaluate claims or arguments the author makes. Okay. Uh, yeah, because that seems to me that that would be part of interpreting. You have to determine the claim. No, 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 for the claim. Really high level for and I really guess high where I was going when I originally threw it out, it's like, so after you've got the basic comprehension stuff, yeah. and after you've evaluated all the craft stuff, in this stage, I'm really bringing it all together. Maybe it goes with synthesize. You're synthesizing all of this information, which is now including looking at other texts on the same topic too, right? And I'm pulling it all together to ultimately evaluate what is this all about, right? Yeah. It, what it, why are we reading this book? What does it mean? What, what does it mean to me? What does it mean to the world? You know what I mean? May, uh, maybe if, if that's not how right. Now you're at the level of evaluation. It truly is evaluation, evaluating the quality because. Because you've done all of these other things. Well, and yeah, like picking two texts and saying which one is, um, is better at developing this theme. And we do have students to do that. Right. Yeah. For sure. And I feel like that's beyond it's just interpreting what it says oh, or interpreting the claim. It's if you're like, talking about multiple texts, I agree. So that may have been what we were thinking, but when you just have up there evaluate claims argument, it could be evaluated the implicit argument in a single text. Like and I'm, right. I'm going to play devil's advocate with myself because as much as I love claims and argument and I, I need it to be part of literature, I also think that it might blow the minds of I mean, I guess we could, we could skirt yeah. the issue and just say evaluate the overall, you know, <laughs> like, what do you do? Well, no, you know, I think it plays into author's purpose yeah. in, in literature. But students are, well, let's go back to the road. Evaluate. For example, there is definitely, and in most literature, Absolutely. an implicit claim. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Animal Farm. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Uh, what if we evaluate the overall meaning of a literary piece? Or evaluate, I don't know. Evaluate the overall effectiveness of a literary piece. Evaluate. Let's, yeah. let's write up, evaluate the argument, and come, come back at it, it, and see how we feel in a couple weeks. Now, is the, but yeah, does it go here? Is it evaluate the argument in multiple texts? Because right, it's multiple. That's not you right. Yeah, I agree with you. It doesn't go there. That's straight. If I, you know, but again, if I'm teaching, like, if I'm in the, if I'm the English teacher and I'm teaching, a, what I, what I feel like I'm doing using this model, right, is there's maybe one central text that I'm pulling other texts to learn, but really that one central text is kind of what we're studying at that point. The anchor text. The anchor text. Uh -huh. And then um, everything else is a way to better understand that anchor text. And to me, this evaluation piece comes back to that anchor text. So after having studied that text in depth and studied a variety of supplementary texts to help me understand what that anchor text is all about. But I think those are two different things. It is. Sure. I, can, I can do that in class, and that is great. But I can also work with a solitary text, especially in yeah. grade and seventh grade, sure. and understand what the, the author's argument is there. So, but I mean, is that still, I mean, are we splicing hairs over the name of the cluster, right? Is, is, the, is the name of the cluster still just overall integrating ideas? It could be within a text, no, not I, just among. No, I, 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 I thought about the cluster. I, I think there needs to be a cluster. 
cluster about integrating ideas and seeing relationships of the, of the tenants. between and among tenants. Put right. central ideas within an enterprise and get them. Well, that's kind of what I'm wondering. Because the one we haven't put up there yet was about the literary or um, historical you know, you're pulling I that, and again, I, I, you're doing that with every text you well, do. Well, put within and across text. Yeah. I like but I think about something, what about if there's something like um, the birthday party? Okay, so if I ask the students to analyze what that author's, and we just did it this week, so that's why I don't know. But if we ask authors to analyze, if we ask students to analyze the author's <laughs> argument within that text, my next question is, how do you know that? Well, that's where you go back to the text based evidence and the main. Well, and the office craft and structure, right? right. And I'm, I'm not sure that you can tell me that without You're doing what you've already done. So is an author where where is it gonna live in nonfiction? Is it gonna live in live in craft and structure? Like what's the author's claim? It's going to live in comprehend and interpret? So then that's where it should live here, right? So I think. Okay. Yeah. Well, identifying it. Well, but is it one? Th I was going to say that one thing to understand what he's saying, and then something else to evaluate. Like, I would claim, like, I mean, is that a good claim? Is it a bad claim? Is it, and that's and where that's I feel it fits here, though. Well, I guess okay. Let's think about it in terms of. I, I'm sorry. I like left your thing about the birthday party because I noticed that my picture didn't take it, and I had to say something about that. So I'm not. <laughs> you had to smile mentally. <laughs> I love no, it mentally. Okay. Oh, I didn't smile. Um, <laughs> I think like if I think about like what is the claim that that um, Shakespeare is making about love in Romeo and Juliet? Yes. If there's a claim he makes there, and I have to I have to evaluate that claim, but I can evaluate that after I've read more about and you, that same kind of thing. What what makes you think you're evaluating it? Well, I see. You just good or bad? Is like is that a is that good true? claim or a bad claim? Is it a, you know like? Because he said he's saying this. Is that, is that you know, I'm evaluating so, uh, it. Is, that, word, is yeah. it a valid claim or is it not? Is it valid or is it bad or is it right or wrong? What? So that I'm, like, I'm giving a an evaluation of that claim that he's making I about the valid the valid point. Well, because I, mean, I can identify it and say this is not. what this is what he says about it, right? And I can back that up with evidence. But then the next level would be so here is why it's it's valid or not, or good or bad, or right or wrong. Um, same thing when with, I, I don't know, I have to come back, I need to think about some more books for that. Okay, but when I ask it, when it, in nonfiction, when I ask an author, or when I ask a student to evaluate an author's claim, I'm not asking them to tell me if the author's claim is good or bad. I'm asking them to tell me if the evidence supports that claim. So you're, you're and though, that, that's, that's different, because they can't say, I just don't like this article, it is a bad claim. Right. But they can look at the evidence and say, this author does not have support for what they are saying. If, if I'm going to tell my mom that my curfew should be 11.30 instead of 11, I need to evaluate the evidence rather than just evaluate if the claim is good or bad. Right. So that is purely... Well, yeah, so what you would say is here's the claim and the evidence is not valid or relevant to the claim. Right, and, and I'm not therefore, sure you can do that in literature. But they're making literary like? arguments, right? And but I think you can. Yeah, you're getting into your. But you could. You, you, you could. I, I'm not. I don't feel strongly about whether we keep this here or not. But what you could do, right, is use other literary texts and or even nonfiction texts to argue whether or not that claim is valid. And we have that core, right? Right. So I'm thinking like Steinbeck's of Mice and Men, right? What claim is he making about the American Depression, and is that valid or not? You could. In comparison to something else, sure, but that's already there. Compare and contrast text in different forms. Sure. That's already there. So maybe it's good. We'll just leave it out. The way it is. I would add though the one about um, historical whatever's written there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what do you want for that one? What does it say? Just well, it just says context. context. <laughs> um, so explain how context historical. Maybe that's where I evaluate it. How explain how historical and cultural context. Uh, Evaluate how they evaluate how the literary or historical context impacts inform the text, impacts the text. Or analyze how I think analyze. Analyze works. Yeah. 
it's it is a higher level. I agree. Yeah. It's not just identify it. But I think there's a Yes, but not how cultural context was that in relation to the same thing. Cultural context. They can Impacts of what? Just the tax? Uh, inform, I, I would say informs the tax. But I think you're right. No, I yeah. like this. Because it does. It, it actually gets me out to what the writers are. Yeah, I really need to know that the changes in terms of the meaning. Yeah, I mean, right. Okay, so everything from here went to here. Okay, so we have for strand one, we have our clusters and we have a bar craft of our, <laughs> I think it's pretty good, of our standards. Yeah. So that's really great. Wow, that's really great work for the, for the day. So um, when we come back on the 20th, we'll go to reading nonfiction text and work through the same process. In theory, it should go quickly. If we like the theory. same And then the speaking, listening, and writing, so we'll do those, and we'll just see where we get by the end of those two days yep. and figure out what our next step would be. Okay? Because we still haven't made that decision about uh, when we get to the vertical or the part about the levels and how many. Okay, great. But so yeah. that'll be later. Right. Okay, so. Um, we meet, and then what we'll have to do, um, well, I just don't have to. Um, what would maybe be a good idea to do is reserve part of the 21st to determine what will be taken to the, or what will be, the, the, I don't even know, sure. public hearing. You know what I'm talking about. Right. Right. Well, it feels like we probably are going to be at a pretty good Yeah, place. we're going to have some really good stuff, but just like let's just yeah. be in agreement yeah. on what's going, what's, right. what are we sharing. Um, not that I, and we can put draft. Yes. Draft, 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 draft. This is a draft of the draft. Yes. Draft of the draft. Yeah. Okay. Okay. In honor of us, uh, I I get frustrated with uh, the media's response to what we do and uh, sort of the negativeness of it. I think that we should take a group selfie with our work behind us. This is it. So, yep. so, so I'm going to stand on the chair right here. Do we have our yeah. Well, I'm going to tweet it out. And Why don't you have one of these girls do it? Because you need to be. Oh, that's yeah. a good idea. Oh, yeah. I was just going to selfie it oh. with all of us. But you guys can do it as well. That'd be great. Let's do it. I like it. Mm. But Janet's not here. Oh, well, we, uh, we, can hold her. we can hold her. We can hold her sign. And we'll wait for Stacy. Yeah. Yeah. She ran to the back. Okay. I'll email That's a nice idea. Around the center. Yeah, we're going to go scan them all. Yep. I'm trying to see We can have some bits in front, I suppose. I'm going to chairs. Yep, I'll email them. Suitable for free. Yeah. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm a half. Nine. There will be one day that I'm not. Okay. Are we at a half? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.